the splendor of the king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in love trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great Good evening, Elfview Baptist Church. It's good to be with you tonight. It's good to be able to open the service for Pastor Charles as he'll be bringing the morning or the evening Bible study. And we want to share with you a few prayer requests. But before we do that, I wanted to read just a few verses of Psalm 34. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak of his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. 
He surrounds and defends all who fear him. That's Psalm 34, verses 1 through 7. May the Lord bless his word to our lives today. So we trust that God has blessed you this week thus far. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy greatly Pastor Charles' Bible study tonight. But before, we want to mention a few prayer requests that have just come in in the last day or so. Dick McVeigh has a broken hip and it required surgery and he's had surgery. And as far as we know now, he's doing well. Phyllis Hamrick is in the hospital and we don't have any update on her at this time. Faye Grimm had surgery and is home doing well. Tina Thaxton is having a procedure tomorrow at Cleveland Clinic. And Brother John Thaxton is having some problems with his back. Pastor Hank Coleman is with his mom. She's had some health issues for quite some time. And he's working to get everything set up for her. So please pray for him while he's away, he and his family, that everything will work out well according to God's will. I also wanted to mention Mary Gerke, a dear Christian lady who is having surgery today, very serious surgery. So please remember Mary. We thank the Lord for those who helped in the food distribution today. Pastor Charles may have more to say about that later. But we're thankful for God's goodness toward us today. So may the Lord bless you and your family. And let's go to the Lord at this time. Almighty Heavenly Father, the Lord who is great and mighty, who is also one who comes near to those who trust in him. He is the Lord, the creator, the ends of the earth, but he also has communion with those who fear him and trust in him and look to him as the psalmist wrote. And so, Father, today as we gather in our homes to listen to and to share the word as Pastor Charles brings the word to us, we pray for him today. We pray that the Holy Spirit will give him clarity of thought and that the joy of the Lord will fill his life as he brings the message that you have given him, Father. We pray that the word will be fruitful in our lives, that it will bring forth within our, in our hearts the peace and the joy that we find only in you and in your word. So Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your multiplied blessings, for the grace that you have poured out upon your children and upon this world even though the world is darkened by sin and terrible times have come upon different countries and different issues are facing the leaders of different countries in our own country, Lord, at this epidemic that has come upon the world. But Lord, this was no surprise to you and you're not abdicating your throne but Lord, you are in charge today and we come to you trusting you and knowing that you will work together for good. All those things that come into our lives as we love you and trust you. So now, Father, we do pray for the sick, those that we have mentioned and others, Lord, that are on our prayer list and on the prayer chain for the church and for all the churches. We know, Lord, that Sickness and distress, troubles and trials are a part of our lives. And Lord, we know that we're born into a world for trouble because 
we're in a sinful world and the world has fallen. And we need your grace and your tender mercy upon our lives. So now, Father, have your will and way in the message today. And if there's one out there, Lord, or more, who hear the word and are convicted by the word and by the spirit that they need to make changes in their lives or they need to come to Jesus Christ to trust him as their savior. Lord, we pray that you will give power to the message that it will accomplish that word until you send it, that it will not return empty, but will be fruitful in every life. We give you praise and glory, Lord, for what you've done in our lives, what you're doing now in the lives of all your children, and what you're going to do, Lord, in restoring and healing and renewing and saving those who hear the gospel and trust in you. So we praise you and we thank you, Father, and we ask now your blessing upon our pastor. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, and for his sake. Amen. Pastor Charles. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Pastor Curry, for that prayer. All right. You are a blessing to us, brother. Well, good evening, church, and I invite you to open your Bibles to Judges chapter 6. Judges 6, as we continue our Portrait of Faith series. And tonight we're going to look at Gideon. He is mentioned by name in Hebrews 11, verse 32. And he is one of four judges that are named in sequence at a time in Israel's history when there was a less top-down authority it was more of uh, people doing what was right in their own eyes and there wasn't so much guidance from a Joshua figure. This is, of course, Gideon lived long before the kings took place. Um, how would you think of uh, Gideon? Um, he is mentioned in the faith chapter, but I'd have you know I've titled this message uh, Gideon, Faith overcomes fear. Uh, Gideon was all through Judges chapter 6, 7, and 8. You see his fear being addressed again and again. That was what was behind his many tests that he sought the Lord's confirmation uh, just to be sure uh, if he was hearing from the Lord. There was uh, fear even several times. It says, uh, don't be afraid, Gideon. So I would just have you know, I, I really think um, Gideon is remembered forever in the word of God as a man that had a great act of faith. But he came out of weakness and he was made strong. He became val valiant in battle. He turned to flight the armies of the aliens, but it was from a starting point of being paralyzed by fear. So I think we can relate to Gideon. He's uh, made of flesh and blood like the rest of us. With our Bibles open to Joshua chapter 6, let me give you a, a Judges, I'm sorry, Judges chapter 6. Let me give you um, a bigger context of the Israel that Gideon lived in. If you would remember Joshua led the tribes in the conquest of Israel. And the east side of the Jordan uh, was mainly where those that were shepherds were uh, putting their flocks out. And those tribes, two and a half tribes, were settled on the east side of the Jordan. And they all together went and crossed the Jordan River and they camped at Gilgal, and there they could see the city of Jericho. And Joshua led them to battle with Jericho in victory, the battle of Ai, and then throughout north and south, all the area uh, that Israel would conquer. Um, 
so the tribes were beginning to settle into uh, the area known as Israel. Midianites from outside the boundaries of Israel would raid into Israel and they would take their, their, um, their crops. Now, uh, Midianites, what were they known for? Uh, archaeology, history, the Bible um, come together and they record the Midianites would make their raids and they would use uh, large numbers of camels. A camel can go for fully loaded for, they say, 300 miles without food or water. So that beast is uh, truly a beast of burden. And they would uh, load, the Midianites would come into Israel. By force, they would uh, take crops and then they would pack them out to their own country, leaving uh, Israel in desperate straits. Now notice Judges 6.6 6, as we begin to look at the text. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Well, there you go. These raids on the crops of Israel were a, causing great distress and hardship and Israel, the children of Israel, cried out to the Lord. And I would like to point out that there are times that God is looking for more than a cry. So many times we say, oh, Lord, I need you. Oh, Lord, do you see what's happening? And we cry out, but there's no heart change within us. There's no readiness to acknowledge where we're at in our um, relationship with the very God we're crying out to. So you might wonder why in the world were the Midianites allowed to harass Israel like this? That's a great question because God gave them the promised land and now you have those people on the outer edges uh, invading in and taking the crops of Israel and running off. And it's produced a great hardship to Israel who's supposed to be occupying the promised land. Why were they even allowed to harass Israel like this? What's going on? Where is the God of Israel? Well, look with me at chapter 6, verse 10. And the Bible says there, God is speaking. Also, I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. And right here we have the answer why the Midianites were allowed to meddle around and cause distress in Israel. And it's because the tribes of Israel had not been obeying the Lord's voice. You can get a better, more complete picture if you were to look at Judges chapter 3. And it gives you the sin specifically that Israel was engaging in. But let me just tell you what it is. Israel was already intermarrying with the uh, leftover remnants of the people that they had displaced. They were not to intermarry. That led into idolatry in those homes because they intermarried and that uh, led to idol worship. You know, marriage, uh, let me tell you, if you don't marry correctly, it's going to be hard to raise a family correctly. If you don't marry inside of Christ, then uh, you have a great disadvantage of keeping the world and, and Satan's influence out of your home. And so it is that they had intermarried and were led into idolatry and they were uh, not faithful to God. And, and, and God is allowing them to be chastened. You know, when we persist, Israel persisted in sin and um, they married who they wanted to marry and then they had to give concessions to their spouse and, and allow that false God to be um, acknowledged. You know, when we persist in our own willful way, it causes problems in all areas of our life. And we lack victory in 
many other areas of our life. And here now, just a, a raiding band of uh, camel thugs that were coming and taking crops, these powerful 12 tribes couldn't seem to pull it together and, and push off this group of Midianites that was wreaking havoc on the food source of Israel. So that is the larger context. I know it took a long time to develop that. But this is the context that Gideon is visited by the angel of the Lord. Now let's look at God's vision for Gideon. God's vision for Gideon. Do you think God's vision for Gideon is bigger than Gideon's vision for, for Gideon? I want to tell you, young person, if you think that your vision for your life is bigger than God's vision for your life, you've got all kinds of vision problems. Um, I would tell you, you can't have more vision than what your father has for you. So let's look at God's vision for Gideon. Chapter 6, beginning in verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the Tiberneth tree, which was in Orpha, which belonged to Joash, the, Aber the Aberite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress. It's an odd spot. He threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to the angel, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to Gideon and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Well, here we have God's vision for Gideon. Aren't you glad that our Father sees us for who we can become in Him? He does not see us only for who we are today. Sometimes bound by sin or less than victorious, our Father sees us in our full potential of faith to live vibrantly and powerfully for him. And the angel of the Lord said, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon's over there. He's, he's stepping around in the, in the wine press with some wheat, trying to keep his bag of wheat from getting confiscated by the Indian, the uh, Midianites. And he's, um, he's going, who, me? A mighty man of valor? You can understand the... Uh, doubtfulness of Gideon's response. Aren't you, so, aren't you glad our Father sees what we can become? He has perfect vision for us. And I would tell you again, you can't have a better vision for your life than the Father has. You know, our Father also is capable of handling our doubts and our why questions. You know, Gideon was very clear with the angel of the Lord. He said, why is all this happening to us? You know, where are the miracles? How many of you feel like, I need a miracle? I need to see God come through. Now, I'll tell you, I have those moments. <laughs> I had some last night from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning. And God came through in a special way again and peace prevailed um, our father understands our doubts and he understands the why question and um, the vision our father has for us 
exceeds our doubt. It goes beyond the why. If we'll just follow the vision God has for us, the why will become insignificant because everything in its purpose will fall in place. That's why we're talking about walking by faith. You know, um, the angel of the Lord turned to Gideon. I like to look at the text and remember, it appears the angel of the Lord was sitting during much of this conversation. And, um, and let's just imagine that it was not a full frontal view of the face of the angel of the Lord. And Gideon is not exactly sure in his heart who is addressing him. He, he has suspicions that this is an angelic messenger, uh, but you know, he's being real honest with, well, if the Lord is for us and, you know, what's going on and he's expressing his doubt. But notice the vision God has for Gideon is that Gideon would see him in all his glory, would see him fully revealed. The angel of the Lord, and many theologians believe this is a theophany, a visual representation of God himself or the pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. In any way you put it, this is the angel of the Lord now gazing and looking toward Gideon. And Gideon is pierced with the weight of what he sees. You know, our Father's vision for us is that we would get a better understanding of His identity, of who He is, what He's capable of, and we can trust His vision for us. So that's the vision the Father had for Gideon. Now I would like you to see the worship that takes place from Gideon toward the angel of the Lord. Let me read verse 21 and forward. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread. And so Gideon had went out and he gathered a sacrifice that he was going to offer the Lord. And he put it down. And let me continue reading verse 21. And fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. And the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Then the Lord said to Gideon, So in his spirit somehow, Gideon heard the voice of the Lord again, even though the angel of the Lord had already departed. Then the Lord said to Gideon, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is peace. To this day, it is still an Orpha. Now, isn't that something beautiful? At a time when the Midianites were raiding in and taking the crops of Israel, what did, what did God reveal to Gideon? He revealed the Lord is peace. Gideon, my vision for you will bring peace to you. My vision for you will bring peace to you. It'll bring peace to Israel. Trust my vision for your life. And Gideon begins to worship. You know, the man who walks in obedience to the Lord has nothing to fear. Gideon was hiding out in a wine press trying to grub out his uh, flour and uh, grain for the week. And he certainly had a fear of the Midianites on his mind. But the man who walks in worship before the Lord has nothing to fear. Because the Lord is going to oversee all of his journeys, all of his steps. 
I want to tell you what else. What happened in this transaction of Gideon getting an offering and bringing it? That's where, in the process of worship, is where Gideon became convinced of the identity of this angel. That angel reached out a staff and he caught, brought rock, a fire out of a rock, consumed an offering and disappeared from before him. I will tell you, it is in worship that our understanding of the Father becomes clear to us. It is in especially uh, private times of worship when we're alone with the Lord and we are musing upon his words and we've got a, a song in our hearts and we're waiting on the Lord and he gives us a better visage and understanding of who he is. Well, see, I'm talking about Gideon moving from a position of fear to becoming a person that did great acts of faith. And I'm trying to point out he had to have a vision from God for his life. And then he had um, a worship experience with the Father. A worship experience. Worship clarifies to us who our Father is. Now, my last point tonight, and we'll be done here in just a matter of moments. I, we have God's vision for Gideon. We have Gideon's worship to the Father. And then we have Gideon's house being cleansed. Gideon's house being cleansed. You know, before Gideon could go out and see a mighty victory for the people of Israel against the enemy of Israel, the Midianites, before any of that could happen, all this private stuff had to take place. And Gideon's house had to have some cleansing. I'll begin reading now in verse 25. Now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to Gideon, isn't it amazing how rapid things can begin to move in our life when we start walking in obedience by faith? The same night Gideon was threshing grain. The same night he made that offering and identified he had been with the Lord. The same night he starts cleaning out his house. I want to tell you, you don't have to wait. When the Lord visits you with conviction and gives you a better understanding of how beautiful he is and how holy he is, and he begins to put his finger on, and you need to deal with the sin in your house. We need to move and deal with it. Verse 25, And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to Gideon, Take your father's young bull and then take the second bull that's seven years old tear down the altar of Baal that your father has and cut down the wooden image that is beside it and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement and take the second bull, take the older bull, and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image which you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten men from among his servants and did as the Lord had said to him. But because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it by day, he did it by night. So Gideon begins to deal with cleansing uh, his house. And I just want to point out quickly that before God deals mightily with our enemies, he deals with us. Remember what I said early. Verse number six of this chapter says that Israel began to cry out, Oh Lord God, where are you? God is looking for more than a cry from his people. He's looking for a changed heart. He's looking for an obedient heart. He's looking for a heart that will, that will find what his vision is for our life and follow it fully. God is looking for us to clean out our houses. Well, 
Gideon began to take a step of faith. And isn't it amazing how one person can take a step of faith and it can affect a whole household? And then God will elevate that person in the eyes of the community. And because of their step of faith and, and coming clean and getting right and getting revived with the Lord, then that community is now benefited by that person's victory in their life. Well, I think you know that um, next time I teach you, I'm going to go on to the more popular text of Gideon. And we'll see his great act of faith in engaging a whole valley full of Midianites with camels. You know what those guys are known for? The Midianites would use camels to make their raids because they could haul cargo for 300 miles. And they were known for gold earrings. They had uh, always had the presence of gold. That was just part of what they traveled with, gold earrings. We'll look at that great victory next time I teach. But uh, tonight, what has the Spirit of God said to your heart? Would you bow with me as I conclude in prayer for this evening? And our Father, I thank you for the fact that Gideon could overcome fear by employing faith. And you nurtured him right through this process. He got to where he wasn't afraid of the Midianites. He got to where he wasn't afraid of what people in his own house would say about tearing down the idols. He got to where he wasn't afraid of, um, of what they were thinking in the Midianite camp. We're going to see that fear gets displaced when we put faith in action. Oh Lord, we know that you used Gideon for a mighty victory that benefited and delivered your people. But before all of that victory, you identified yourself. And Gideon worshipped. And he cleaned out the idols from his home. May we make application tonight. And Father, bless everyone that is hearing this message. We pray your safety upon us. We cry out to you, but with a readiness to open our heart to what you tell us to do. Jesus, thank you for your love. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us here at Elkview Baptist. Comfort all and lead us. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Well, God bless you and thank you for tuning in. And God willing, we will see you in person or online Sunday morning. Good night.